Good morning. Um, we're just waiting for a few more people to join. We'll just wait one more minute to allow a couple more people to join. Quinton's uh, getting on a plane. <laughs> yeah, so he's not training. I was really hoping for uh, Lewis to uh, to join us. All right, Amy. I see you're on. Can yes, you put, I sure um, am. You put the number one thing on the agenda being the uh, six only storage because, logo. Like, the last time that I came by here, there wasn't anything on the agenda, and I wanted to make sure that we had at least a conversation about the six storage logo and um, getting towards being able to actually have a a full vote. Um, any reason not to be able to have a full vote on things? <laughs> no, not at all. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> Cool. I um, uh, really just kind of wanted to check in for like the, hey, look, making sure that we like people know that we are trying to be able to get a logo. Cool. So I don't know if uh, if you guys have uh, have seen the, the GitHub issue. I will go ahead and put it um, in the chat just, just to make sure that people do. Yeah, I've just put, um, ah. I've just pasted into the chat the, the, the PDF that uh, uh, that Amy has uh, very helpfully uh, done for us. Um, where we kind of have a, a clam because clams store pearls and pearls are precious. I know it's a bit corny, but <laughs> hang on, that's where we are. Um, the other groups requested animals, so you know, here we go. Yeah, indeed. So, anyhow, if 
if any of you have any um, uh, any strong opinions on this, could you please uh, vote yay or nay for any of the particular items? My my vote is for the top right hand corner because it's a clam and it's got the CNCF sort of logo kind of thing built into it, which um, makes it clear it's not like a Kubernetes sig. Yeah, but so the, uh, obviously. Uh, I, uh, the only question I had was, uh, would we eventually want to add personality to these things? Uh, uh, will we be able to add eyes or something later in case we want to animate them? Yeah, if you wanted to be able to do that, I don't think like our designer would have a problem with that. Uh, I'm I'm more just looking at it like, oh, this has been out there for a while. We should we should decide on things. That would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Alex. Sorry, I joined. I could not get my computer to cooperate. Yeah. No worries. Hi. Greetings. So we were we were we were just uh, discussing the the logos that Amy put together. We really should just decide on one and <laughs> move forward. Um, Alex, do you want so to share your screen has... so that we can actually look at those uh, logos? Oh, sure. Yeah. The the. Uh, yeah, it's it's in the GitHub. Which yeah, is yeah. I will look at. I I think I like the one that I uh, I think I like the one that you picked as well. The the one on the top can right. You see that's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you see the screen? Yeah. Yes. So I, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but it's. it's I can this see it. One, yeah. 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 I, I like that one too. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine with me too. I, I like it, although the one with the eyes makes it look like. I don't know what I'm doing, or I'm hiding. <laughs> Maybe that's how we feel more often than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Let's not put eyes on it. So as not to do things fully by fiat, um, uh, being able to put out a vote for like what the top three of these would be? All right. I think what I'll do is I'll just circulate an email. And we can okay. and we can quickly vote for reply, and I think we can move this forward today. Hopefully, sounds like a plan. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, uh, hi, hi, Luis. By the way, uh, thanks for joining. Um, so, we wanted to um, we wanted to get an update of where we were with the use case example and template um, that you uh, that you are working on and putting together. Um, the link is in the meeting minutes, but I will also stick it in the chat window just in case. Um, so today's uh, uh, the documents we are going to discuss, I asked uh, two uh, people to join in the call. Uh, one is Deepti. She's a maintainer of Vitesse, and uh, she can contribute to the um, to the use cases. And the other one is uh, Saif Al Harti. He's been doing uh, all our benchmarks, so he'll be able to contribute to the benchmark uh, document. Excellent. Awesome. Okay. So, so Luis, do, do you want to take us through the the application document? Yeah, um, this is myself and Simon. This is way back. Uh, so let me get here. Um, that's great. So. Um, hold on real quick. I don't see the link to your, is this spreadsheet the link, Luis? No, it's, it's down. No, it's it's on the CNCF. It's right here. So if you go to September 11th, and then there's a link there. Use case example. I I, I also put the link in the chat, Erin. Yeah, when I open that, it's not linking directly to it. Okay. Oh. It's this one right here. Meeting minutes is just coming up as August 27th, and nothing else. I don't know if anyone else is having. My computer is just doing the thing. I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah. O o August twenty seventh is the is the top of the dock. I just don't think it's loading it. I'm sorry, guys. It must be. No, no this is the right dock. Yes, August twenty seventh. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sharing the screen, so you're correct. So what we have, 
uh, let me start for, start with those who are new that uh, we had discussed a a model of something to do. Uh, we wanted to give some documentation for users after they read the storage 101 document, which describes uh, what is block, what is file, what is object, what is the database, and so on. So once they read that and they have a preliminary concept of what storage is, then they probably want to ask, well, how do I use application X? What storage system, what persistence storage should I use with application X? And this is what the goal of this uh, uh, task is. And what we wanted to do is we had a lot of discussions, I think just before August 27th, on what it, the output of this, pro, of this uh, task would be. Uh, we had first that it would be a, a document that has uh, many uh, applications in it. We also had discussed on the output being a, a GitHub uh, markdown uh, uh, pages where the community themselves would, uh, you know, we would start it, but they, it would be like, you know, the community would continue it, uh, where they would bring an app uh, a document and they would describe how it interacts with those uh, persistent storage services that are described in the storage 101 document. Um, and uh, so with that, uh, uh, Simon, uh, and I, uh, from Simon from Pure Storage and I got together and kind of started thinking, you know, just brainstorming on what would it take to actually accomplish this. One of the things that we started looking at is that we may need more information in, uh, this is why we have this section down here. We may need more information in down in the uh, 101 document, uh, just to, as references, because the, these application documents may have uh, some new concepts, some new ideas uh, on technologies that are not familiar with for these uh, newcomers, and they, they may require more uh, information in the uh, what's called the landscape or what we call storage 101 document. Now, that being said, then the next part was uh, how would it be done? How would it be included? And one of the things that we came up with was it probably be as simple as not maybe a not a, a document, a massive document for each application, but maybe keep things simple, right? Almost like a, a brief for each application where an application you could have, uh, we could have a matrix of uh, an application and and how it deals with you know, with we got storage and then we got applications. And then the application will have its own page uh, on and making, you know, not making 20 pages, anything like that, just a couple of pages on how it deals and provide more information on how it deals with that persistent storage. So that's where we left it. And uh, we, I haven't gone back to this since this date. Uh, and that's where we are. So this application, you mean by application, we mean uh, application like MySQL and Cassandra and stuff, right? Because uh, MySQL, Cassandra, any application that Kafka, any application that we think of today, any application that we think of tomorrow. So we're trying to to start with something simple. You know, try, it's going to be iterative. We are going to see, we're going to try it. We're going to. Uh, see what works, and then we're gonna keep adjusting. Um, but it, yes, exactly right. If I'm a customer, I don't think of storage first, right? I'm customer. If I'm a customer, then I think of my application first, my question requires, and I come up with that question: is how oh, I require Kafka for my application. What do I do, right? Uh, how do I deploy that? What is the correct storage system to not not storage? Uh, system as in product, but what is what storage technologies should I be going after, right? Um, that's the whole goal of this this uh, work. Um, Does that make sense? That totally makes sense. And yeah. I just had an idea, and of course I'm going to throw a wrench in it because that's what I do, Luis. No, it's all good. <laughs> what if we built where people could add in their particular storage and 
I mean, we, the tool could identify different criteria like we put in the white paper about storage and how it runs, but then it could be more of a living. The problem I have with a lot of these docs is their point in time. Like, you know, we've talked about, oh, we shouldn't put that in or we should use this example of this particular vendor and that will become stale over time. And we all know we're not good at documentation and we're not gonna go update it. Mm. But what if we had like a tooling where someone came on and said, I have my application the tests or something, right? Like, and I, I, I want to know what I should back with persistence for that. Mm. Um, and, you know, wh whoever is part of that project, the tests, or even any of the CNCF projects, they could go and list the criteria of what that storage capability is. And then that way, someone could use this tooling to say, oh, I'm either using this or I'm thinking of using a product that needs high performance. They could search kind of this database. And then that way, people could, you know, submit a github to update their new project as it comes along and then the landscape's more of a living document than these point in time documents that are creating. would anyone be interested in working on something like that and thinks it would it, be helpful the the only thing about that is that is that referring to products or, or projects i i guess i see like i'm hoping that we continue to evolve the the sig to you know, in, improve the landscape for storage within CNCF because it's, mm. you know, compared to other projects, it's probably pretty uh, slim. And mm. then, you know, you would be able to take these sandbox or incubation or whatever and, and see what's, you know, involved, what criteria it has. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if we'd limit it CNCF or what. I don't know. I'm just kind of... Yeah, I definitely agree with the fact that especially storage is still something that's like still evolving. I think a large number of people are going to be making progress. So which means that things are going to change. Mm -hmm. So that part definitely True. Uh, makes sense. But uh, uh, what, what I caution, right, is I, I would prefer that this doesn't become a marketing tool for projects. That's my only concern. Yeah, that was the other side of the concern also. Right? Yeah. Uh, now, if we can say, for example, that um, you know an application requires the following uh, things, right? Specs or maybe icons of 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 values of storage, you know, object, you know, object whatever, and then S three or uh, uh, block uh, with thin provisioning, you know, something like that. And then what I I'm suggesting, and this is just a suggestion, that on the product page of a product or a project, that on there, they refer to the names used in CNCF and say, well, we provide the following things, right? So now the customer can say, oh, okay, I can go to a CNCF and see what the names are for everything. Right. And, and then I can go to the product that I'm looking at and seeing if it satisfies what I'm looking at. Um, so, so I, I think we're getting we're 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 conf conflicting two different things here. Yeah. So, so first, so first off, I think we had agreed that rather than calling it application, we were going to call it a use case, so that we can use this for sort of end user applications, but also you know projects and, and, and things like that. Um, and and specific. Okay, I don't think we were, what we wanted to do here was to get to a stage where we have a template where we can say for this use case, and the, say, you know, the use case could be Cassandra, it could be Mongo, it could be Jenkins, it could be Kafka, it could be um, um, etcd or Prometheus or whatever. Um, then we would, for, for, that, for that particular use case, these are the things that you need to um, that you need to consider. Um, so we we would say you can use it this way, and you can deploy it using using these things. Um, and we would um, 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 and we would consider things like locality and perhaps how to how to back it up and and things like that. Um, so for example, we 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 would create a template that could list a number of different options. 
And the idea would be that people could then, the community could then raise PRs to say, okay, so for Kafka, for example, if you're doing Kafka with, I don't know, um, um, EBS volumes, for example, this is a, a way you can do it. And if you're doing um, etcd on Google Cloud, this is a way you can do it. Um, and it would, but it would include the same, you know, five or six parameters or whatever the five, five or six sections from the template that would be kind of mandatory for for every option for that use case. And then the community can kind of build this out. But I think the first thing is we need to lock in that template and at least one example. And if we do that, we can then launch it and we can get the community to to contribute, right? Because we we could we could then ask the different projects. So you know the, things like um, you know the Kafka project or, or database projects or whatever else to to actually contribute some of their own examples themselves. Yes, I agree. And the only thing I just want to adjust is the last part you said, like Kafka on EBS. Like I'm trying to be very careful on you know specifying a product. I don't know if we should go in that direction. This is the only, again, I keep bringing this up. This is my main concern always, right? We're trying to make it so it's generic. So I would adjust it just saying Kafka on block, right? On Roblox or Kafka on, and that's what I would say. And that's my only adjustment to what you just said. Let me know if that, what do you think about that? Yeah, sure, that, that, that makes sense. I mean, we, you know, we, could, we could say, for example, this is how you do Kafka on a storage class using read write once, for yes. example, and then, and then you could have an, another one with read write many or whatever else, and maybe another one with an object store or whatever else. But the yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. But we do need to also keep in in mind to make some provisions for um, you know things like data locality or. Um, how do you, how how is the best way to back this up, for example, and things like that? So, so we may need to include things uh, or technologies which might be, you know, different for different uh, providers. But that's probably okay too. Yeah, and actually, uh, locality and backup and restore. I don't know, think those are in the landscape. Are they? Um. I think we do talk about locality. Yeah, we start with, yeah, we do talk about locality in the landscape. Okay. Okay. Um, and we do and we do talk about um, point in time backups and snapshots and things like that. So. Okay. Cool. So I think those things are covered. Um, the, the 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 thing that you have there about sort of storage appliances and, and you know some advanced topics like NVMe over fabrics and and things like that. I I think they're kind of interesting, but I think they're they're perhaps maybe for a version two more advanced kind of topic. I mean, I, I, I don't think that is um, relevant to a large part of the audience, but I'm kind of open to comment on that. Okay. So, so okay, okay so, so. Uh, going back to Aaron's question, does this make sense? I, okay, have we adjusted or can we come up? Yeah, I still think that think? Uh, her point that things are going to evolve uh, yeah. is valid. And so what we write today is going to become obsolete. So we need something for that. Yeah, so one of the things that we're thinking of is that this is going to be in uh, in Git as a markdown. And then people can just send PRs to update it. Um, that's one mode. Uh, I, I don't know, unless there's another. We'll just have uh, to have people update it as new projects come in though. I mean, we'll have yeah. to have a process so that it does get updated. Um, and and I love the idea, Alex, of it being use case centered. I think that's always how it should be like Kafka where we are kind of pointing to product. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yes and no. I mean, we could be even more generic, right? I have a messaging system. I need block storage which projects currently provide block. I don't know if we want to break it down into something even more agnostic. Um, well, so, so, so the, reason, the, reason why, um, the reason why I think it, it, it shouldn't be too abstracted is because 
for this to be useful, it, it kind of needs to be, um, it kind of needs to be relevant to a use case. So, so for example, you know, if, if we're talking databases, um, is it a good idea to have multiple volumes for, say, transaction logs to split up the transaction logs or the data or whatever else? Or with Kafka, for example, you know, can you balance the load across uh, multiple volumes? Um, and when we come to the performance side of things, you know, you, you could actually say that, for example, you know, things like Kafka, for example, are sequential write throughput limited um, and that's an important thing to consider on the, sort of on the on the product that you're choosing for example and in order to do backups for example you might choose a particular layout over another layout because that's a better way of doing the backups so so i think it is useful to be specific because otherwise you're just going to have a fairly generic thing where every use case will just become hey just use a, just use a storage class and it doesn't matter but in reality, it does matter. And if we abstract it too much, I think it becomes less useful. Okay. Maybe, I'm just thinking out loud. Um, the goal of this is so that when users read the 101 document and they have an idea of what application they want to use, they can go to the storage vendors and ask the correct questions, right? And they can go to the website and say, oh, this use case requires the following things or, or suggests the following things. And then they can go to the storage vendor and say, what do you think of this? Can you provide this? And, uh, and then that way they're, they're empowered, uh, which is, I think, the entire goal of what we're trying to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it will even encourage the storage vendors to uh, to uh, PR and updates the stuff too. <laughs> yeah. um, and and on, on the point about, sorry, go on. No, go ahead, Alex. No, I, I was just going to say on on the point of you know the things need to be need to be updated. We <clears throat> we could um, we could put like a simple expiry date or something like that on the on, on each of these use cases but they need to get reviewed once a year or something or once every two years or something like that and if uh, if it goes past the expiry then we could raise a PR to to archive it unless anybody wants to update it within a certain time so that we can kind of keep them current I think it's a cool idea I think uh, maybe the first thing is to take a stab at one and just as a, um, how is it called, a straw man and just start poking at it, right? Until we adjust it to what we want. Yep, agreed. Yeah. I mean, what would be absolutely awesome would be to get, um, to at least get the template done with maybe some really simple example um, right. in time for KubeCon. So that, that so that we can we can um, we can launch it in the in the SIG meeting that we have at KubeCon, and hopefully that will encourage some of the community to to uh, to contribute. Okay, I will start a template on the SIG storage uh, GitHub as a markdown thing, and then you uh, just talk there. Awesome. Okay, that's brilliant. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to just. Uh, kind of echo what Luis was saying. We just really have to be careful because this is uh, territory that could <laughs> land us in controversy. So as much as possible, if we could avoid kind of saying, hey, this is a specific product or recommending products, uh, that would be best for us uh, as generic as we can remain while still being helpful uh, should kind of be our guiding guiding light. Completely. Yeah, I, 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 I yeah. You know, we're not endorsing any products. We're simply providing exactly. an example. There might be other ones. I mean, we just, we have to be very- Yeah, we just have to be very careful about that. Very That's careful all. and act like lawyers. Yes. Word it the right way. I'll, I'll put it a little disclaimer on the top. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame me, just a messenger. <laughs> 
Uh. <laughs> All right, I think we're good with this. I'll add this to the minutes of the, this link to the minutes of the, of the real one. Brilliant. Okay. Um, the, the other thing that I wanted to, um, to cover was the performance um, documents. So, um, Sugu, I, I know you were supposed to um, set up a, a chat. In, in the meantime, I had um, sat down with, uh, with Nick Connolly um, and started putting a, an, an outline together. So I'll just share, I'll just share the link in the chat. Um, Sorry, this is ridiculous. I've been waiting for too many meeting minutes, so I apologize. Conferencing is still an unsolved yeah. problem. <laughs> it really is. All right, I, I don't know if you can see that now. This is a problem with having 120 tabs open, anyhow. Um, so, so the idea behind this um, performance and benchmarking doc um, is to provide users with a better understanding of the performance of storage systems um, and to uh, give them some information on uh, the tools that we can use um, and also document, you know, some of the some of the um, very common pitfalls. Um, Specifically, we're saying we're saying that you know we're not looking to publish any benchmark numbers here. We're not um, looking to provide any comparisons, and um, I'm proposing that we exclude tools for distributed benchmark because I think that's probably too complicated for a, for a first draft um, uh, of this document. So what I've done here is. I've tried to put an outline together based on some emails that I've had back and forth with a couple of you and um, uh, and tried to sort of capture the the ideas which I, which we can then start to to flesh out so as as a as a as an introduction um, it's going to be heavily focused on saying um, that the best way forward is always to to test your own application um, not to use um, published results because that's that's really uh, a useful way to compare systems, um, and um, and we're also going to talk about using tests to probe a particular performance issue or to help you know select a platform or to compare your your own platforms. We're going to have. Um, we're going to have a, a, a section on common concepts um, where we will refer to the landscape white paper to cover different storage types. Um, we'll talk about different volume workloads and different database workloads. Um, and we will talk about um, some of the, the different measurements um, uh, and, and the units of, of measurement and things like that, that that you'll be looking at when, when doing benchmarks. So things like, you know, um, through IOPS latency, et cetera, but also things like the, the variance um, between different benchmark runs, resources that those benchmarks are going to use, the scalability, that kind of thing. Um, have a general talk about the architecture um, and the topology 
So um, reminding how the different layers in a storage system all contribute to the performance. Um, talking about some of the storage attributes because I want to have a section in here to say, um, to, to describe how things like consistency, availability, and, and data protection um, have big effects on, on, on the performance and, and, and how you measure that. Um, and also, you know, understanding uh, things like queues and things like that of the topology to, to kind of understand why, you know, you might get one result when, when testing a single volume or a single database versus testing multiple databases in, in an environment, that kind of thing. Um, and then, because benchmarking is one of those things where it is quite horrible and there are lots of many common pitfalls and, and things to consider, um, we've We've written in quite a long list of um, of things uh, that you need to um, that you need to consider and that people often get wrong. Um, so I'm not going to sort of read through all of these, but you know, happy to have lots of comments here. Um, and we, uh, you know, the idea is that for each of these, we'll, we'll we'll have maybe a couple of sentences or a paragraph to kind of describe. The issue and and why the um, and, and why it impacts the, the performance of the system. There are a few areas that um, we kind of discussed, um, covering some advanced topics, things like you know new mind scalability testing and things like that, which which I've kind of put into this advanced listing here because I'm not sure whether we we'll actually go through it or not. But we might include just a reference. To it as something we'll, we'll do in the future. Um, and then finally, there is a section on, um, on the benchmarking tools. So first off, um, things that you need to sort of level set, the, the, what I'm calling the level setting the environment. So, you know, understanding the, the performance of the, the cluster that you're running on settings so like, you know, the, the CPU, um, performance and and the network performance of the nodes that you're running on, um, and some tools that you can use to um, to uh, to benchmark those, um, and then volume benchmarks um, where I'm proposing we, we focus on FIO and database benchmarks where I've, well, I'm proposing that we focus on on Sysbench. So I'd love to have. Um, sort of comments or feedback on this, um, and then we can um, we can break up the the different sections and, and how different uh, different people uh, contribute. I'm going to be sort of driving as much of this as I can because it's the thing I'm fairly passionate about. Um, and again, I'm kind of I'm kind of aiming to get to a point where we where we have. Um, a draft that, that potentially we can publish and talk about um, for for KubeCon, so that we can get more comments from the from the community and more feedback from the community at that stage. So, so that uh, was a long monologue. <laughs> so there's one thing I uh, I uh, almost forgot to mention. I was uh, I don't know if you've heard of a company called Percona. They uh, actually uh, are a um, consulting company that offers. Uh, Support for open source databases. Uh, they've been, yep. uh, yeah. So they uh, they've done extensive uh, work on benchmarking, and uh, they said that they would be interested in contributing. So if uh, you want, oh, to fantastic! Up, yeah, I will so find out. Are, the is that is a service, or how does that work? Or they just do it out of the goodness of their heart? I mean, do we need to get funding from the CNCF to do that? How does uh, no, I think they are they are willing to do it uh, on their own. Uh, I can find out if uh, if they are looking to get paid. It didn't sound like they wanted to get paid. They just wanted to contribute. That's wonderful, then. Yeah, that would be that would be absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and uh, yeah, actually, that's that's a good point because Procrona also do um, they've done a lot of work with. Uh, performance dashboards and things like that as well. 
Yeah, they have spent it. years on this, so they know these things in, <laughs> inside out. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be fantastic. Yeah, Alex, are you going to show some of the results of running those tools? Uh, just have some type of some kind of visual or even some output from the console, just so that people can uh, understand exactly, you know, what are what are those concepts? Absolutely. So, so the idea would be, for example, with um, the idea would be that for you know, so so I think we 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 described you know say some of the different um, the different workloads that we would be talking about. So we would give um, we would give examples for for both the volume benchmarks and the data benchmarks for those specific workloads. So so there would be examples of running it and the results and how to interpret the, the results. Okay, great. Yeah, that'll be helpful. But as with all of these things, right, um, we 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 have to, you know, it's it's going <laughs> it's it's going to have to be. We're going to have to limit the scope of everything that we can do, you know, because some of these um, products, you know, like FIO, for example, has probably about five hundred different options, and so. We'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll focus on some of the more common things. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, long story short, I'd I'd love to I'd love to um, get comments or feedback to this. Things you think we should add, things that maybe you disagree with, um, and if anybody is interested in, in helping with particular sections. I know Sudo you and your team were, were interested in obviously doing some of the database stuff. Um, let's let's mark those out and, and and maybe we can start putting some content together. Yeah, so Saif, uh, Saif will uh, uh, share the uh, Lua scripts and the syspinch configurations that he used and uh, maybe give cool level guidance on that so that you can take care of. I uh, I actually, I remember you sent me your email, but I don't know where you sent it to me. <laughs> Is it uh, 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 chirkop.com? Uh, Alex said chirkop.com works, yeah. Okay, I will I will make sure that I, I send you, I connect you to both SAFE and the Percona person, I'll find out their email and then you can take it from there. Awesome. Uh, That's brilliant. Hi, Alex. This is Deepti. One question I had was, uh, I know SAFE has also done a benchmark using TPCC. Is that something you consider for the database benchmarks? Um, yeah. So, so Sugur had mentioned this, and, and, and that would be that would be certainly something of interest. Um, we need to. Um, we need to kind of see how we can make this easy or straightforward for somebody to actually do, however, right? Because, um, um, you know, I, I think I think I put a comment in here uh, about sort of preparing the environment for, for, for benchmarking. You know, I'm, I'm obviously aware that TPC um, has, some particularly stringent requirements in terms of you know numbers of clients and network topologies potentially and things like that. So, um, if if we can make it in a simple way that somebody can actually do, then I guess it's something we should do um, because that's obviously quite a, a well understood standardized test. Um, but but that would be sort of my my main consideration there. Okay. So the goal of this document is to not only um, provide a guiding philosophy for benchmarking, but also to provide the basic tools. That's right. That's right. Um, and and you know the reason why we're we're covering things like the pitfalls as well, um, and and setting up the the environment is so that you know we can avoid people 
um, getting sort of bogus results, right? Because I've lost, I've lost track of the number of times, for example, I don't know, somebody has done a database benchmark on a, on a one gig database, which runs entirely in cache and, you know, get some ridiculous results, for example. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So, so, so thanks, um, Sugo and Siphons um, and DT. That all of your help will be incredibly appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, unless there is anything else to. Uh, to cover, those are the main things we had on the agenda. Um, one thing I was going to ask was um, um, just a reminder if anybody had feedback for Aaron's document, now is the time to to, uh, to provide that. This is the document that we discussed last uh, meeting um, for the project review process. I don't know, Erin, if, if you've had a chance to move that forward at all. Um, I know that the TOC was actually reviewing it and adding stuff and um, in their meeting when they invited me over. So I haven't looked at it for probably a week or so. But yeah, I mean, I think since we're one of the first SIGs, we should help kind of set some, I don't want to say rules, but some process forward about how projects get reviewed and criteria and then what happens when we turn them over to the TOC because right now it, I've feedback I've gotten from various projects is they feel like it's kind of chaos um, and it still seems like there's a you know a duplication of work between what we're doing in the SIG and then projects suddenly presenting as well to the, the TOC you know so we need to figure out that balance so yeah any feedback or suggestions the doc is meant to just kind of set up a straw man and get people's feedback. I'm not trying to dictate how I think we should do things. So I, people have the time, I'd appreciate them looking at that, please. Cool. Um, I meant to ask you as well, um, you know, we had um, put together sort of a template of like a kind of questionnaire or a survey um, for the projects to fill in as, as part of the information gathering for, for say a sandbox project. Is, is that sort of template going to be part of your document or, or would that be like a, a separate artifact? Yes, I think we should put that in there. I think, I love the idea of it and I think all SIGs should develop kind of a, a, a similar template based on criteria for their specific subject matter area. So thank you for reminding me of that. I will put that into the document because I think that helps projects figure out if, you know, that's even the level they should be going in, if they're answering those initial questions, um, et cetera. So yeah, let me add that in, Alex, and then I'll put it out. Cool. All right. Does anybody have anything else that they wanted to uh, to mention or bring up? Okay, silence. I guess that's good. <laughs> All right. Um, so we'll be meeting in a couple of weeks. Um, Aaron will put the agenda forward for that for that call. Um, and I think that's going to be the last meeting before um, before KubeCon. So um, it would be it would be uh, if if we want to get the use case template um, and the performance drafts out um, for KubeCon, that would be a really good time to to check on those documents. No pressure, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. All right. Great. Thank you. Bye. If we're done, I think I'll post the call then. Bye bye. Bye. bye.